Welcome back. All week we've been talking with members of North Carolina's congressional delegation about the issues they will face when they return to Washington next week. Joining us tonight, Congressman G.K. Butterfield, a Democrat who represents the 1st District right here in North Carolina. Congressman, good to see you. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You better enjoy the Labor Day weekend. It's going to be busy, right? Well, I tell you, the August recess, uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe, is really a working recess. Uh, we have uh, been continue continuing to work throughout the month and listening to constituents in all 14 of my counties, and they are concerned about the direction of the country. Hurricane Harvey is obviously now something you're likely going to tackle in, in September as well. How do you see that proceeding? I mean, some of the, we talked about off camera, you know, uh, was Katrina or Sandy, sometimes these things aren't as smooth as they always are. Do you think this one will go smoothly? Hurricane Harvey was a disaster of biblical proportions. Uh, this country has never seen anything that even equals, begins to equal Hurricane Harvey. And so we've got to have a response to, to Harvey that is equal to the, to, the, to the challenge that it presents. Uh, we've got to appropriate probably upwards of $100 billion in order to aid the citizens of, of uh, Houston and Harris County to recover from this storm. And we don't need to be political about it. The, the last thing the people of Houston need is for members of Congress to politicize disaster relief in times of need. Uh, we saw the politi politicization of uh, Hurricane Katrina. We saw it again uh, with Hurricane Sandy, and that was most unfortunate, even though we got the appropriations. There were so many members who tried to attach conditions to to the to the appropriation that that made it very difficult. And now some of my Republican colleagues are saying that they want to attach conditions uh, to the appropriation of money for for Houston. Uh, I uh, I object to that. I think it's a mistake uh, to try to attach any type of condition. We need to to pass very quickly a supplemental appropriation for the people of Houston, probably in the range of 100 to 150 billion dollars. Congressman Pitt from North Carolina earlier this week on this show said he wants to see money for Matthew uh, recovering any Hurricane Harvey funding. Is that something you'd like to see? Well, you know, North Carolina never uh, got uh, fully reimbursed for, for the harm that was done with, with that hurricane in, in our state. Uh, we, we were told that we needed to wait to the 2018 budget uh, to be finalized, and, and now we're very close to, to getting a budget out the door because September 30th is upon us. And so hopefully uh, we will get money for Hurricane Matthew. And and, uh, and hopefully the people of Texas will be made whole as well. So you don't care whether it's in the budget or the Hurricane Harvey bill, you just want to see the money? <laughs> the people of North Carolina, the people of Texas deserve help from their federal government. And we don't need to play around with it. We don't need to politicize it uh, one bit. Uh, Democrats and Republicans need to come together and appropriate sufficient funds to completely remedy the, the damage done in Texas and the damage done in North Carolina in 2016. All right, debt ceiling is another big issue you have to tackle in September. Uh, there are some that want to attach conditions, uh, including Mark Walker, who's on the program last night. He's saying they've been trying to make cuts to deal with the debt for uh, so many years, uh, and nothing's getting done. So uh, he wants to attach it to this to try to force something to get done. Why, why do you think he's wrong? What, what our citizens need to understand is that our nation has a limit to the amount of money that the executive can borrow. When the president reaches the limit, he cannot borrow any more money in order to meet the obligations of the government. We met the debt ceiling back in March. And uh, OMB Director Mulvaney asked us to quickly pass a, 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 an increase in the debt ceiling so that we could meet our obligations, and Republicans have, 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 have just delayed it and delayed it and delayed it, and now we're at the breaking point where we have to raise the debt limit. If we don't raise the, the debt limit, uh, we're not going to be able to meet our obligations, and for any congressman, uh, Democrat or Republican, to even suggest that we need to attach conditions uh, to the raising of the debt limit is irresponsible. We need a clean debt limit increase, and we need it now. Uh, president Trump is not the only president to have reached the debt limit. Uh, president Obama reached it in 2011, and other presidents have, have, have reached the limit in, in other years. And there has never been much controversy about raising the debt limit. President Obama met resistance in 2011 which became very unfortunate, and that's why we have sequestration in, in our federal spending today because of the deal that was reached with the debt limit in 2011. But in 2017, we cannot uh, play around with the debt limit because our credit rating is at risk, uh, our reputation in the world uh, is at risk, and we've got to meet our obligations. Yesterday in Missouri, when President Trump unveiled his um, tax plan, uh, or at least the, the broad parameters of a tax plan, he said that, quote,
what the Dems are looking to obstruct tax cuts and tax reform. Are you trying to obstruct the president? I'm not going to obstruct the president if we can come up with a with a fair uh, tax reform proposal. But but the, the president has not been specific on on a tax reform proposal. Uh, neither has Chairman Brady or or Speaker Ryan. They talk in generalities about tax reform, and all of us agree that there needs to be reform uh, to our tax code. But the devil is in the details. Uh, do we need to give uh, tax breaks and tax cuts to wealthy people? Absolutely not. Uh, do we need to remove some of the loopholes in the tax code? Yes, we do. And so Democrats and Republicans need to come together and, and find those things that we can agree on and reform the tax code. If they want three tiers, Yes, that's fine. If you want to talk about lowering the corporate tax rate, that's a good conversation that we can have. Uh, but if you simply want to give tax cuts to the wealthy uh, at the expense of working class Americans, we are, Democrats are opposed to that completely. Well, what about tax cuts for everyone? We need revenue in this country. We, we, cannot, we cannot simply do across the board tax cuts. We need the revenue. We are a $4 trillion government. We take in somewhere around $3.4, $3.5 trillion each year. And so we're running a deficit. Uh, when President Obama came into office, George, President George W. Bush left him a $1.5 trillion deficit. But President Obama was able to trim the deficit. It was very painful the way we had to do it, but trim the deficit down to a half a trillion dollars. We cannot cut anymore, but we must continue to provide services to the American people. Therefore, the budget will not uh, absorb any significant cuts in revenue. And to cut taxes for rich people and even those middle class families who are at the high end is irresponsible, takes revenue away from, from the budget that needs to, to, to be used. We don't have a little bit of time left, but I, do, I want to ask you about all this going on with the monuments and what to do with these Confederate monuments all over the country. Um, what do you think should be done with them? I mean, should they just be taken down and put away? Should they be put in a museum? Uh, should they stay up? What do you think? This is a very difficult issue that we've been grappling with in Washington since the shooting in Charleston uh, some years ago. Uh, Confederate monuments that are attached to federal, state, and local property need to be removed. If they are moved to a museum, that's fine. If they're fine. If they're moved, removed to private property, that's fine. But I do not condone any, any, any governmental uh, unit uh, allowing a Confederate statute to, to remain. Uh, the Civil War was a very difficult period in American history, uh, and we need to teach the Civil War. We need to teach but we don't need to celebrate uh, the Confederates who, who were treasonous against the U.S. government and against the Union uh, during the 1860s. And so I'm, I'm sympathetic to those who, who are descendants of, of those who fought in the Civil War, but we need to, to teach that history, but not celebrate it by having monuments in very prominent places. Congressman, I know your schedule is busy, and boy, you got a busy month ahead, too. Thank you so much for a few minutes tonight. It's good to see you, Thank sir. You. Thank pleasure. you so much. My Time pleasure. for one more.